In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of God the Father, and of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Once again we gather around the table of the Lord to offer our praise to the God who fills us with life. Today we've been asked to remember in our prayers particularly Deb Graziani. The repose of the soul of Deb Graziani. Let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds to celebrate. We call to mind our need for God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Lord our God, grant us that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I pray that you may not lose heart over my sufferings for you. They are your glory. For this reason, I bow my knee before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, God may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with the fullness of God, now to God, who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the, the disciples, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, on five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. We see in the readings today a lot of conflict and contrast. Uh, the word gospel means good news. I'm not sure the gospel today appears to us as anything but bad news. Division, Jesus says he's come. I think perhaps it's rather that because he came to shake things up, to be really different than sort of the way common people acted, he sees that that's the source of this division. And it's also the experience of the early church, too. Some of them accepted Jesus, maybe even among the Jewish people and among the Gentiles, and some of them refused to accept Jesus. Within families, even. Perhaps since probably the 4th century onward, people who were Christian, people who belonged to their own household, were rather united. But it seems to me that in the last little while that this division, the ideas of division, have popped up again. It's certainly things that we can see in families now. The division are... are on the subject of religion, on the subject of maybe going to Mass on Sunday even, or religion or things like that. But in many other ways, there's division in families. And some of it is based on the fact that of the belief in Christ. In contrast to that, we have this absolutely magnificent reading from the Ephesians. To me, I was thinking, this is maybe a prelude to what heaven is all about, that God will take everything up, will do things beyond our comprehension, and we will be part of that. And the God who does these things and will do these things is with us every day. So maybe in spite of all the divisions that we experience in our faith, in our lives, in our society, God is with us working wonderful things. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by your word, the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom, and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus, our Lord, you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and while all the church, as one voice, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and, whence, and, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, 
we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My sisters and brothers, we pray now with hope and confidence as Jesus himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other now a sign of Christ's peace among us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.